Ohio State starts their 2023 journey this season with a couple of questions. One of those questions is not, will we beat the Indiana Hoosiers? They're pretty confident in that, but the questions are at quarterback Kyle McCord and Devin Brown. Are we going to see one guy emerge in this matchup against the Hoosiers? And can Indiana, what can Indiana do to at least gain some confidence and look decent in the matchup against the Mighty Buckeyes? From L.A. to Piscataway, all Big Ten, all year long. This is Big Ten 10. I just want to get this out of the way early. This is probably going to get ugly, and it's going to get ugly early, and it's going to get ugly often. Ohio State is a college football playoff contender. Ohio State has the best playmakers on the perimeter in all of college football. Yes, they do have some questions at quarterback, but this is a loaded college football team. On the other side, Indiana is a team that is chock full of transfers, and they were in desperate need of some transfers because Tom Allen needs to try to save his job. He needs to do something to try to improve this team. Now, although I think the Hoosiers are improved very much so on the offensive side of the ball, defense is still a sizable concern, especially what's going on in that secondary. We'll get to that here in just a minute. But when we look at this thing from the Ohio State standpoint, of course, the big question, right? CBS, Brad Nessler, and Gary Danielson are probably going to be focusing on this as well. It's the quarterback position for the Ohio State University. It's Kyle McCord and it's Devin Brown. Kyle McCord had every opportunity to lock this baby up, right? Of course, Devin Brown was hurt towards the end of spring, did not play in the spring game, but yet Kyle McCord, the coaching staff, just wasn't as confident right then and there in McCord to let him kind of run away and take that leadership responsibility engineering this offense at the quarterback position. Instead, Devin Brown kind of comes back, and it looks like now they are almost neck and neck. So what that tells me is Devin Brown came back from injury, and he looked very, very good. So none of these quarterbacks have really stood out. Some people have said, well, it's maybe because none of these guys has really stood apart from the other Ryan Day is saying that they're both ultra competitive and they're both really, really good. He just has a tough time deciding who he thinks is going to be the better quarterback for this team to give them a better shot to maybe win a national championship this year. No matter what side of the coin you're on, we're going to start to find out against the Indiana Hoosiers. Now, are we going to see one guy step away from the other after this game in Bloomington? No, absolutely not. Because this is an Indiana defense that was putrid last year. Yes, they're patching some holes on the secondary. This was an Indiana pass defense that was last in the Big Ten in yards allowed. And it wasn't by a close margin. It was by a long shot that this was the worst defense against the pass in the Big Ten conference. So both Kyle McCord and Devin Brown are going to get their time to shine. They're both going to get their time to look good. One might say that the strength of the Ohio State offensive line is at the guard positions. That's where they have the returners. At left guard and right guard, of course, they had some really good tackles. You got a redshirt freshman coming in at center. So one might say, let's get the ground game going early. Let's ease these quarterbacks into play a little bit. And let's let Travion Henderson and Mayan Williams go to work. That's certainly one way to think about it. But what I want to see... If I'm Ryan Day, if I'm this offensive coaching staff, if I've got a decision to make before that late September showdown against Notre Dame, I want to see as much tape. I want to see as much on film as I can from both Kyle McCord and Devin Brown. Let's get these guys going early. Consecutive completions, confidence, momentum. We know, I think we know Devin Brown's a little bit more mobile. Kyle McCord maybe sits back in the pocket and maybe throws the football a little bit. We don't know a ton about either guy because we haven't seen either of them play. So this game is going to be very telling to see where that, where this Ohio state offense is for me. I want to see how the Buckeye offense operates with Kyle McCord at quarterback and Devin Brown at quarterback and see how different that is in terms of how the plays are called. I also want to see who Ryan Day trots out there first, who he maybe gives more reps to uh, at first. But I think it's very important to see as much as we can early because if you just hand the ball off and hand the ball off, yes, you could probably run the ball down Indiana's throat all afternoon long. Absolutely. 
And you might put five touchdowns on the board on the ground, and all of a sudden you got it's 35 to nothing at halftime. It says, well, we got to ease up on these guys. Wait a minute, we didn't see what we wanted to out of the quarterback position. So let's get these guys throwing the ball often and early. Early and often for both Kyle McCord and Devin Brown. Short passing game, I think, it could be key to building that confidence, building that momentum early on. We know Ohio State likes to take the deep shots, and trust me, they're going to take their deep shots. But throw a seven-yard out to Marvin Harrison Jr. Let him take it 40 yards and get a big play for a first down. Throw it maybe a short screen play to Emeka Abuka and let him take it 50 yards uh, for a big play, maybe a touchdown down the field. Let your receivers do a bulk of the work and really – work your way into that deep throw game because the short passing game is going to start there. You know they're going to incorporate run, the run game. The run game, I think everybody looks at the throw game and the great weapons on the outside of Ohio State as they should, but this is going to be a really good rushing attack as well. I also want to get a look at that offensive line um, as well. They could have some competition on the outside, right? Aaron Casey is a weak side linebacker. Andre Carter, they're expecting a lot from at Indiana coming off the defensive end as well. So very interesting to see how those tackles um, are going to play out there. But of course, the big storyline, the big thing I want to see, Kyle McCord, Devin Brown, who maybe starts to show progress as maybe that quarterback that should be starting in South Bend, Indiana um, at the end of September. All right, let's talk about Indiana because this is a stacked unit that the Hoosiers will be going against, this Ohio State defense, especially this front seven. You've got some real good pass rushers. JT Tuivaluo is slated to be one of the best in all of college football uh, coming off the edge this season. Um, you look at Jack Sawyer is great. As well, And of course, those other linebackers, Tommy Eichenberg and Steel Chambers, you can't stay traditional if you're Indiana in this football game because you got a guy in Taven Jackson in there, a four-star kid, highly recruited from the state of Indiana, went to Tennessee, crowded quarterback room uh, last year, handed Hooker, and of course, Joe Milton was in there, so he transfers back home to Bloomington. Let's see the mobility of Taven Jackson. Let's see him make plays with his feet because if you play traditional – Okay, this offensive line at Indiana is going to be way outmatched by what Ohio State has on defense. If you play traditional, these Ohio State pass rushers, these Ohio State defensive linemen, these, these linebackers that are going to be involved in rushing as well, they're going to pin their ears back, and they're going to keep coming, and they're going to keep coming, and they're going to keep coming. You need to try some misdirection. You need to try some confusion, some motion, um, some zone read plays, some sweeps, some things like that. Jalen Lucas has to touch the football. He's that running back, wide receiver, hybrid combination for Indiana. Whether it's screen plays, whether it's the run game, quarterback type of thing, getting involved with some zone type of stuff, he needs to touch the football early and often. EJ Williams is another guy on the outside that can do some things as well. Get Taven Jackson moving. Roll him out. Have him throw on the run because if he's stagnant back there, you're just throwing away a part of his game that I think is really good uh, for Taven right now. And that's his mobility. And that's his ability to run with the football. You got to get these defensive linemen. You got to get this front seven moving. You can't let them anticipate what you're going to do next. If that happens, it's going to be 56 to nothing at the end of the day. I want to see Indiana be successful. I want to see them at least put up some points on Ohio State. I want to see some semblance of an effective offense because you look at the pieces that the Hoosiers have on this team, and these are some solid pieces um, on the offensive side of the football. You look at Josh Henderson in the backfield. I already mentioned Jalen Lucas, EJ Williams, Cam Camper, right? He got hurt um, last year, but he showed really good flashes um, kind of earlier in the season. And you know what you have back there in that Ohio State secondary. Of course, you got Denzel Burke, but what else do you have? That's going to be a very interesting matchup because that's kind of one matchup for Ohio State that I want to see how these defensive backs respond against some pretty good wide receivers um, over there at Indiana. I think that's going to be a really fun matchup. We'll see if Indiana can maybe take advantage of it early. I don't know. I still think Ohio State is going to be just fine. But if Ohio State is able to defend and man-to-man -man coverage early on and Ohio State is able to mix up their pressures 
up front of the front seven, this one could get ugly and could get ugly really quick. I think no matter what happens, it's probably going to get ugly and get ugly really, really quick in this game between Ohio State and Indiana. This is a good game, I think, for Ohio State to really find out a lot about their team going forward in preparation for that Notre Dame game at the end of the month. That's kind of the building blocks of Ohio State right now. Find out what you got at quarterback, some parts of the offensive line, the secondary. Find out what you got in maybe those parts that aren't as strong as the running backs, that aren't as strong as those wide receivers, those skill positions that you know are great at Ohio State. Figure out what those things are and get better on them as they continue to progress. So do you think it's going to be Kyle McCord? Do you think it's Devin Brown? Who do you think is going to be the better option for Ohio State? Do you think Indiana can get anything going against Ohio State? Leave your thoughts and score predictions in the comments below. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching Big Ten Ted, where it's all Big Ten all year long. Make sure to like the video to spread the word of Big Ten Ted to the masses and subscribe to the channel for updates on Big Ten content that drops every day.